Anyway, my name is Mark Phillips. Uh, I work for Ansible. I'm based here in London. Um, what I want to show you this evening is why Ansible is the easiest way to automate your IT. I quite, uh, I quite like Stephen's sentiments earlier on about this is not a battle. That's had very scary. Uh, so how many Ansible users have we got here this evening? Wow, that's quite a show. Actually, I expected it to be less. So, <laughs> three words to describe Ansible. Simple, powerful, agentless. But it's simple and easy. There's no complicated DSL to learn with Ansible. Tasks run in the order that you run, that you list them. We fail fast. This easy doesn't mean lacking in power though. Ansible takes a batteries included approach. We've got over 240 modules in the core distribution. Each one of those modules designed like the Unix ethos to do a specific job and to do it well. And in case you haven't guessed, we do all this with our agents. We run by default as a push model, works over SSH, tried and tested security. And contrary to popular belief, this does actually scale excellently. Rackspace in the US are using Ansible to manage over 50,000 hosts. So configuration management. Is that your mom? <laughs> what do you want for your dinner? <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the Wikipedia page on configuration management lists 23 tools. So it's not just about us three and the two people in the room who are running salt. Uh, <laughs> I was quite impressed that both of you put your hands up, actually. Uh, <laughs> but controlling an infrastructure is about more than just configuration management. As Gareth talked about, we've got provisioning, we've got app deployment, we've got workflow orchestration. And there's lots of tools out there that do each of these things separately. But the thing is, Ansible does it all. So here's a quote from Michael Dehan, our founder. Michael said, this is what Ansible was written to do, manage complex multi-tier deployments. This is why orchestration is the topic really, not configuration management. He says, we don't just stop at configuration management or application deployment, we really do orchestration. You must do all of those well and be an outstanding workflow engine. And he's right. Infrastructures are getting more complex, but just because they're getting complex doesn't mean they have to be complicated to manage. So it's all very well me telling you all about that stuff. I'll like show you a bit of it. I feel for Stephen and his demos, that didn't quite go according to plan. That's Emacs for you. Or maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's David's keyboard, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I've, I've taken the, uh, the, the forward thinking step of recording all of my demos. Uh, I planned these at the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. I, I've actually, I've got some stuff here that we could do live if we get time, but I've got a feeling that we won't. So anyway, all of the demos that I'm going to run, they're, they're all in AWS, all EC2 instances. And first up, what I want to do is show uh, a provisioning play. Can you guys see that at the back? No. Squint. <laughs> or use your beer bottles or something like that. Can, can that you might you work. Put the mic a bit closer Zoom. to you is that better? <laughs> okay, so what we've got here is a play. Nice, easy language to understand. All of you will recognise that as being YAML. We've got a vast section at the top here, just a bunch of variables that we can change. Uh, pay attention to the tags bit near the top there, for those of you in the first half of the audience who can see that. Um, we've got two tasks that we're going to run in this play. These run in order, so we're going to launch an instance, we're going to use the EC2 module. Halfway down there you'll see that we've got a count variable with the default of 1. Next line, you'll see where that comes into play. Um, these instances that I spin up, by the way, are just plain Amazon Linux instances. They're not templates that I've made, they haven't got anything extra on, so they're just the vanilla Amazon instance. So. Here's going to be the command line that we're going to run. We've got a minus E switch here, which is extra variables. Now, I've given that a load of JSON there, but actually you can give it YAML as well. And you'll see where I've changed that count variable that was in the play to 10. And setting the tags, we've got an env of prod and a type of web. 
Later on, one of the demos I show, um, you'll see where those tags come into play. So let's run it. Now I'm counting on the network being really good. Oh, fabulous connectivity I've got here this evening. Look at that. Brilliant. <laughs> doesn't always go that smoothly, does it? Um, now, I have sped up this demo. First of all, I'm going to show you that um, nothing up my sleeve in the Magician style E. Here's my uh, AWS console. No instances running. It's going to be a short flash in a second, not from me, from the screen. This is where I cut this a little bit short. Uh, I'm a little bit tight. I wanted to prep the demo with spot instances, so I had to wait quite a while while I was waiting for the spot to come up. You know, sometimes you've got to go cheap, haven't you? There we go. Um, so we've got the task that was that name label in the place, has launched the instance, uh, and then we've got task brought up new instances. With a little message here that just spun up 10 new prod web instances. That second step there is just the debug module that I've used. We've got a bunch of modules in core, things for talking to HitChat, Slack, IRC, all of those sort of things. So you could send a message off to your favorite chat system to say, yeah, this is what we've done. So we've spun up those instances. I'm going to show you now how we can use Ansible to do ad hoc commands, just things on the hoof. So this time, note that we're going to use the Ansible command and not the Ansible playbook command. We're going to use the ping module. Now, this isn't ICMP ping in the traditional sense. This is actually doing an SSH connection to the hosts and making sure that we can talk. We've got a whole bunch of green there. That's good. Again, network. Hasn't let me down there. Brilliant. That was real time, by the way. I didn't speed that one up. So I've got another little ad hoc play just to show you how we can make use of a different module, sort of at the moment. I thought I'd check out and see if Amazon's instances, as they start, um, see whether Bash is vulnerable. So we've got two plays within this one playbook here. We've got a host all at the top and then a host prod. And you see that host all at the top, we've got tasks group by key, ec tag env. Then on the next play, hosts prod. We're going to run the command module, just do that simple check for Shellshot. We're going to save it in a variable called result. Then in the next bit, we're going to print a message if the word vulnerable appears in the standard out of that variable. See how I type that without no hands? Amazing. So I did the grouping. Oh, wow, that was very quick. That, that, again, that's real time. That wasn't. That wasn't sped up in any way. Um, Ansible, as it does the talking over SSH, you can set the number of forks, which is the number of SSH sessions you're going to spawn. So uh, for this demo, I've got uh, forks set to 20, because there's 10 web servers I've got here and a couple of database servers I'll show you in a bit. Uh, so it goes off and does those connections all at the same time. Uh, where I was running this demo from as well was actually on uh, a CentOS 7 VM sitting on my laptop at home. So it wasn't like I was running it locally to the AWS infrastructure either. Suffer the vagaries of BT's wonderful internet connection. So the thing that we're actually talking about, configuration management, as well as doing these ad hoc things, as well as doing this provisioning, we can also do configuration management in the traditional sense. So first up, I'm going to run the play first of all, and then show you what the uh, what the playbook looks like. Uh, I've got an extra var setting again there. Install app true. I want to show you something in the playbook in just a second with that. I'm going to run uh, time as I run this command as well, just to show you that actually this is real time and I didn't speed it up despite it being a Blue Peter special. So off we go, do the grouping again, so we're reacting to the AWS tags. First play there, note it says web servers. One of the things that tends to slow down configuration management of any of the tools that you ever use is installing packages. Uh, one of the things that we tend to say with Ansible is um, keep your package repositories close to the host that you're using. So a way of performance enhancing things is just to you know, have local yum repos and things like that. A few packages installed, a few Python dependencies. Make sure a path exists. 
all of the orange stuff that's coming up there and changed means that it's done something. Second part of the play here, DB servers. We'll see in a second how the uh, AWS tags have been used to do this grouping. Ensure the database is installed, initialize the database, and boom, done. There we go, real time, one minute. If anybody had a stopwatch on me, you'll see that I was wibbling throughout that one minute as well. So, the play that does this uh, is actually 69 lines, so I'll show you it over the next three slides. We've got the first portion here. Hosts, all tasks, group by again. Uh, anybody knows Ginger 2, if you're a Django program or something, you'll recognize the little curly braces, just Ginger 2 syntax. The templating engine that we use in Ansible is Ginger 2, and uh, anything within the playbooks, wherever you use variables and things, is also Ginger 2. So moving on down, uh, the web, surf, uh, web servers play. You can see that um, we go pseudo true, tasks, ensure the required packages are installed. With items is a keyword that just says loop over these things. All of the modules, so things like yum, pip on the following thing, they're all written to be uh, to aim for desired state, or as people like to uh, use the word these days, idempotent. Uh, I try my best not to use that word. One reason, because uh, it's actually a slightly incorrect use of it, it's a mathematical term, but secondly, I have real trouble pronouncing it, and I stuck to water before I started, because if I'd had a couple of swivs of here, I would have never got it right. Uh, the Python dependencies using the pip module. Then we're moving on to uh, do a clone straight from GitHub. Make sure the service definition is in place. You can see the when statements here, the when install app with a pipe through default. So the default false is, uh, is a Ginger 2 switch. The when conditional that we have, uh, if you just say when and a variable name, it says when that variable is defined. So if it's not defined, that item would fail. But saying default false means if I didn't define it, then it would assume it wasn't set and so those items wouldn't run. Another part to the play, we work on hosts, DB servers. And for any of you guys who are used to using Postgres, you'll know the first time you start the Postgres service, it will uh, moan about the database not being initialized. So what we've got here towards the bottom of this plane, the command line, there's a create statement there. This is part of the desired state of the command module. It will look and see if that path file exists, and it won't run that again. So if we run this playbook again, that wouldn't happen because the path exists. So pulling all of this lot together, we can do some orchestration. What we've got here is a play based on the web servers that we've set up. Now, if you look about halfway down there, there's two new keywords that we've not used in any of the plays previously, max fail percentage and serial two. Remember I said that we've got fork set to 20, so it hits all 10 web servers at the same time. What the serial and the max fail percentage do is control the number of web servers that we're gonna restart. So in this case, we're gonna restart two at a time. If more than four of them fail, the rest of the play will stop. So what we would do here is, in effect, protect six hosts. So we wouldn't ruin our web service. Ansible Playbook command, again, uh, again, this is uh, real time. Real time in a recorded uh, the weekend sense. Restarts two web servers, restarts two more, restarts two more. And amazing that they all worked. So the two green that we see in the recap there, they're, uh, they're the database servers that we didn't work anything on. So that grouping at the, uh, at the beginning handled that. So all of this, all of these things you can do, configuration management, provisioning, the whole lot. It's as simple as installing just Ansible on its own. Uh, Amazon Linux, if you enable the EPO repo and uh, do an install, this is how long it takes. Time again, just showing how long this really takes. The Ansible package itself is 876 kilobytes. I did say that right. There we go. 
10 second install. So you can do a 10 second install, you don't have to install anything anywhere else, and you can get going with Ansible. With a quote from Michael, CTO, I wrote Ansible because none of the existing tools fit my brain. I wanted a tool that I could not use for six months, come back later and still remember how it worked. Uh, I know what he means. Uh, I used to work with uh, another very well-known configuration management tool who may or may not have been represented this evening. <laughs> I'm not looking at you, Gareth. Uh, I spent seven years working with, with that tool and quite often I could come back to some of my own work and look at it and think, what was I thinking that day? Um, mainly with Reg substring. I used to use it too much, but there we go. But you see, there isn't a problem with agents per se. It's just that there's never only one of them. And before you know it, they've taken over all your servers. Thanks, folks. <laughs>